Okay guys, today we're going to be doing a video with a rifle that I have put together here. This is the first video I've done on this gun. This is going to really be uh, the first batch of load development I've done. I've put about 100 rounds through it so far, 106 to be exact, but anyway. Um, we've tried to break it in a little bit, but I haven't done like a proper break in as what a lot of people would say. But I've, I've shot it a little bit. I'm going to do a little bit of load development today and I'm going to hopefully film the whole thing for you depending on battery life and whether or not uh, we have any complications. But the first four rounds we're gonna put through the gun is going to be Hornady 140 grain boat tail hollow point match rounds or bullets rather. I'm loading it in Lapua brass. We got some small rifle primer pocket brass from Lapua. All of the loads that we're going to be doing, I can get my paper here are on this sheet of paper. So whether or not you can see that, we're doing essentially um, five rounds of each charge. We're only using H4350 in these. Uh, the primers we're using are the Remington 7.5 bench rest primers. I've actually had really good luck with those in like Palma type brass. And I, I like them, I've had good results. But uh, we're gonna be doing low charge up to the high charge obviously. We've got some 140 ELDs. Hornady. We've got some Burger Hybrid 140 target bullets as well. Like I said, we're going to be doing five of each charge. For the 140 ELDs, we're going from 39 grains up to 41 and a half. And then for the Hybrid 140s, we're doing 39.5 up to 42.0. So half grain increments working from low to high, obviously. Um, I'm going to put four rounds on paper here. I shot one just to make sure I'm not going to kill the GoPro, hopefully. Uh, put one round on paper. I'm going to shoot the rest of that uh, just kind of the the burner loads we're just gonna shoot through them and then we'll actually start the load development but we'll shoot these first and then we'll start working through the the actual stuff here that we're planning on shooting through the rest of the life of this barrel so let's get started <clears throat> aiming for the top left diamond here make sure I load it around So the first shot earlier was 2648, just FYI. 2651. 2645. 2656. That same load literally shot like a one whole group just a minute ago. Um, or a bug hole group, I should say. And I was hoping I could do it on camera, but I usually tend to shoot better when no one's watching. At least that it's easy to say, right? But that that right there is a, a good point of beginning for what we're gonna be going for here, because realistically, I mean, this is a custom rifle from scratch. It's an Impact 737 action, short action. Um, this is a Bullet Central 1 in 7. I think it's a 6 groove barrel and a 6.5 Creedmoor with a modern precision arms. Uh, four port muzzle brake. I don't really know what they call it. Um, I've got the uh, AccuTac bipod up here. This one's a giant bipod. This is for like their. 50 BMGs or whatever it's it's kind of ridiculous for what we're shooting but it was it was what I had access to so I, I got one and um, we've got another rifle that we're gonna be doing some stuff here on the channel with that it will be a little more appropriate for so more on that to come later some cool stuff but for now we're going to be shifting over to that small orange circle just to the right of that try to move right to left or left to right rather on these targets here keeping it simple I'm going to start a new shot list actually so just FYI the average of those it, it was 40 grains of H4350 with the same primer brass uh, we just used a different bullet but we had the same powder and everything it was a uh, 40 grains of powder and looked like 2652 is our average Standard deviation of five, an extreme spread of 15. So considering that group, um, 
I would be perfectly fine with shooting that load on a regular basis because that's solid. But we're going to see if we can put some really small groups on paper, hopefully. So first load's going to be this 39 grain charge of H4350 behind a 140 ELD. All right. That's the current graph set. We should be good to go. Hopefully, I hope you guys can hear the uh, velocities as it reads them off. I don't know if you can or not, but I'm just hoping for the best here. Hope you can hear me. It's not windy, so I would like to think that's not going to be an issue today. Okay, so that's what I'm kind of hoping for all day. <laughs> I think this gun is capable of doing that on a consistent basis. Now the spreads are really good so far. Um, again, this barrel's had less than 120 rounds through it, so it's it's what a lot of people would still consider breaking in um, in terms of like you know big magnums. You want to have 100 rounds through the tube before it's broken, in, and your short actions you want to have 200 rounds. Whatever. Everybody's got a different idea of what broken in is, but essentially it's still a relatively new barrel, um, but it's not brand new. So 2604 average. 15 feet per second extreme spread with a six foot per second standard deviation. I, I'm i always happy with that. Anything that's in the single digits for a standard deviation, I'm I'm very pleased with. Um, these were actually measured on a charge master. So there, there was probably a little bit of fluctuation in the powder, but even with that, those are really tight spreads as far as I'm concerned. Um, more than I will ever need because I don't shoot competitions. I just shoot for fun So anyway really good start. I'm happy with that group looks good. I'm hoping to see uh, the same thing with faster velocities, but uh, We'll find out very very shortly All right same bullet up to 39.5 grains of H4350 here with that 140 ELD I'm gonna aim for the top of that center diamond So our spread went up a little bit. It was 2634 average, 34 feet per second extreme spread with a 12 feet per second standard deviation. Like I said, if I can keep it in the single digits, I'm very, very happy. On a gun like this, I don't really expect that on a gas gun, but on a bolt gun, it's, it's doable, obviously. Got a little more horizontal spread there. Probably gonna give the gun a second to cool down and then run down there and maybe check on the GoPro, make sure one, it didn't blow up, and two, that it's still recording. All right, we are up to 40 grains of H4350 with the 140 ELD. I'm gonna shoot for that right orange circle on the top. 2,679. 2671 2666 2662 I knew I was going to do that. Gosh dang it. 653 Stared at the thing so dang long my eyes were starting to get fuzzy. So that may have been me. I don't know. I think I probably did it to myself, but nonetheless, still pretty good group. Just threw one, but I don't know. Might have been me, might have been the gun. It's hard telling. 
So I forgot to mention on that one, we had an average of 2666 with an extreme spread of 26 feet per second and a standard deviation of 9 feet per second, just so you know. So, admittedly, I'm not being very nice to the barrel because I'm not giving it a whole heck of a lot of time to cool down here. But I kind of want to get through this while we still got daylight. So, I am just being upfront about the fact, full disclosure, that I'm <laughs> not exactly letting the barrel cool between groups. I know some people are like really big sticklers on that, but I'm just short on time. I'm, I'm just going to let it rip. So, anyway, 40 and a half grains, H4350. Top right diamond. That's the next one. Well, I missed a shot on there. That's I, I always get a little nervous with that because with the way I have the chronograph set up, if you get it too much of an angle, you actually kind of miss the sensors, which is what I probably did on one of those shots. But it's picked up four out of five, and we had an average of exactly 2,700 feet per second, extreme spread of 30 with a standard deviation of 12, which is still not bad. I have not shot a group yet that I'm unhappy with. Everything has shot well precision wise so I'm happy so far things are going really well as far as I'm concerned the guns handling really good it's shooting well I do like the action um, it's it's kind of I'm getting used to it it's not I'm not used to this <laughs> so it is taking a little bit of um, figuring out the gun I'm not even used to having something that has this much adjustability to it like I almost don't even know what to do with it I've, I've never had a custom rig before so this is all very new to me. I, I saved up a long time to get something along these lines. So it's uh, it's proving to make life a heck of a lot easier on paper. Um, I put very little effort into low development. So I, I think it's safe to say I could have basically picked any of these out of the box and been like, run with it. But basically just pick your speed, pick your bullet and go from there. But Anyway, things are going really well. I'm gonna stick the barrel cooler back in here and try to give myself a little bit of cheatability on barrel life because it's probably not gonna be very long if I continue to shoot like this. <laughs> but anyway, it's a beautiful day. Good day to be out shooting. Just keep hoping things go well. Nothing breaks or falls apart or stops recording. So I realized that I did not, uh, mention the name of the chassis here which it's not like you can't see and I'm sure everybody knows what this is by this point in time but anyway this is the MDT ACC chassis with their stock I don't know what length this one is but uh, scopes mark 5 Leupold uh, 35 millimeter tube which is kind of a pain in the butt to be totally honest anyway we're gonna shoot the next group 41.0 grains H4350 So I think four of those went into one hole. That's kind of hard to tell. Maybe it's just a split. I can't tell if three went in one hole and two went into the other or if it was four and one. And then we just had one flyer. I wouldn't really, anything inside of half an inch, I, I kind of almost want to refuse to call a flyer. To me, that's, it's still a good group. I'm, I'm not one of those bench rest shooters that's trying to shoot one hole on every group I fire, I realize that me as a person, I'm not quite that consistent. Now, 
if you have a trigger set to half an ounce and all you have to do is touch the trigger and the rest of the gun is on a mechanical sled, maybe you can make that happen. Maybe I could make that happen. But I don't think I can do it consistently. So to me, that's fantastic. I, I really, 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 really like seeing those groups. That's, that's awesome. 27, 35 feet per second average, 26 feet per second extreme spread, and a 10 feet per second standard deviation. So great. I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with that. I think a lot of people take stuff like that for granted. Because coming from shooting a $200 Savage Axis, or not Axis, well, yeah, that's what I started on, 270 Savage Axis. Moved over to a Savage 12 with a bull barrel. That thing still shot really well, but you kind of had to work for it a little bit more. So this is awesome. It's almost, it's too easy. But you know, you complain about four going into one hole and one flyer, like, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> Still puts a smile on my face. And I, I know you guys probably don't see it. I am checking the brass, um, more than likely cutting it out of the video for the sake of time, but um, always check your brass for safety. It's very important. All right, we are on our last charge of 41.5 grains. H4350 for the 140 grain Hornady ELD. This is gonna be our last group with these and then we're gonna move on to the hybrid target burgers. And good old delicious burgers. reading on that one. I missed a reading on that one, or rather the, the chronograph didn't pick up one of the shots, is what I'm trying to say. 2774 feet per second average, 20 feet per second extreme spread, and an 8 feet per second uh, standard deviation. Every single group that I shot with those 140s, the ELDs, I, I was happy with everyone so I wouldn't hesitate to use any of those I'm I'm not gonna shoot 41 and a half I think that's what Hornady's load manual specifies as a max load so I don't really like running the hottest charge I can I mean if it's what you have to do or that's just how you like to do things that's fine um, for a target rifle like this I don't feel the need to I'm gonna shoot it probably a lot more anyway in terms of like a lot longer shot strings or a lot higher round count shot strings or firing sessions whatever you want to call it so I would kind of prefer to run a more mild charge run a little less speed and maybe save the barrel a little longer but there's there's no right or wrong I mean you do it however you want to do it whatever whatever your gun likes it likes but clearly this thing's not super picky um, with the components we're running or just ran it shot everything well i mean everything i would be happy with so anyway we're going to move on to the hybrids see what those do if those hornady shot really well i'd like to think that the the burgers are going to shoot just as good if not better but it may hate them it may shoot terrible i don't know we'll see moving on all right we are on to the burger 140 hybrid target bullets 39.5 grains is our initial charge I aim for the right side of that center diamond the big diamond and go for the corner there 2615 2630 2,615 2,635 2,621 Hey what? I'm a firm believer that Berger knows what they're doing 
when it comes to making target bullets. So 23, or I'm sorry, 26, 23 feet per second average, 20 feet per second extreme spread and an eight feet per second standard deviation. Good stuff. Moving on to 40 grains of H4350. Okay, on to 40.0 grains of H4350 with the Burger hybrid target bullets. 2,658. So far the burger's looking pretty appealing. Well, the Hornady's are a lot cheaper <laughs> and easier to find. Um, average on those was 26.54. The extreme spread was 13 and the standard deviation was 5, which are wonderful. So we will continue on with 40.5 grains of H4350. Okay, moving on to the 40 and a half grains of 4350. I didn't let the barrel cool as long this time, so clearly heat hasn't been super detrimental up to this point, but just worth noting. 2,679. 2,687 2,687 2,686 That's the worst group we've shot with them so far. Ugh. Come here. Yeah, everything's looked good. There, There's not been a charge that we've shot up to this point that has exhibited any kind of a concerning pressure issue. Everything's been, looks good. So just, so you guys know, we're not running into anything stupid hot. And this powder is, as everyone knows, really, really stable temp wise. It's a, it's a warmer day. It's a relatively hot day considering we're coming out of winter, but everything's doing good so far. Not running into anything that would raise my eyebrow so to speak so we got 2687 on the uh, average 18 feet per second extreme spread and six feet per second on the standard deviation spreads with these bullets have been really good i know that these burgers across the board um, from everything that i've shot are probably one of the most consistent bullets that i've shot on a semi-regular basis so I, I really like them for consistency's sake obviously the hornady shot really good but i do think that burger does have a slight edge in terms of consistency just with their projectiles um but again i mean for there's a lot of people that shoot hornady bullets and win a lot of matches so i'm not saying that hornady bullets are bad but i do think that the burgers um they do an excellent job so we're gonna cool her off a little bit shoot next group okay <clears throat> we are on to 41.0 grains of H4350. We are going to be shooting at the, well, actually, hang on. I'm going to shoot for that, that bottom right orange circle. I don't want to shoot the diamond anymore. 2,731. 2,738 2,721 Man 2,711 Just can't do it on camera, I'm telling you Eight 
117. All right. So we ended on 2,809 feet per second, 20 feet per second extreme spread and a standard devi deviation of seven. I'm not gonna make a long drawn out uh, outro here. I'm just going to say that um, I'm trying to make it very evident that I am appreciating the modern technology that makes shooting a target like this with that many good groups with an average shooter. I'm, I'm appreciating it. I'm, I'm grateful that we have the capability of doing this. Now I know this is expensive. Um, I'm not saying that I'm shooting with a cheap gun, but what I am saying is that someone who's not a qualified gunsmith by any means can literally go buy parts off the internet, have them ship to your house minus, you know, firearms actions and whatnot, and slap together a rig and go out and shoot like one whole groups with almost no effort in the low development. We're using good components. We're, we're not using dirt cheap stuff here. Again, I know this stuff's expensive, but I could probably do the exact same thing with a much, much cheaper scope. I don't think I need to have an ACC chassis. Now I did find a lot of this stuff on sale and kind of barter and trade to, to get stuff cheaper, but nonetheless, it's still expensive equipment. So I'm not downplaying that, but what I am saying is um, I'm impressed, I'm, I'm happy. I, I like to see this kind of stuff. Um, it is neat to be able to have a custom rifle at home like this that you can just go buy a prefit barrel and spin the thing on at home. You don't have to take it to a gunsmith and, and have it cut. You just get a barrel vise, clamp the thing in there, spin on your action, spin off, spin on, um, headspace it. It's it's easy to do anymore. So um, this is really cool. I'm excited. I'm, I'm really happy with it. I like how it turned out. But uh, anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you are not aware, we have a couple social media platforms if you check us out on facebook instagram youtube we have a website i'm going to try to start putting a lot more time into that provided my life allows it but uh <clears throat> check those things out i'll try to post some links below if you're watching this on youtube so that you can find some of those other locations thank you guys for watching appreciate the heck out of you hope you got something out of it have a good day and we'll see you soon and stay risen I'm supposed to say that at the end of every video. Do that. Don't do that. Freaking $3,000 scope, scope caps don't work.